So, part four. I don't know if it's going to be the last one. Because the other thing I felt I needed to talk about were maybe some the, the plot holes. This chapter is so full of them. And I really don't have time to go over all of them. They're that numerous. But I figured the main one I need to go over is right here. This chapter is the plot. That's basically it. Edward Cullen leaves Bella, and that's our driving force now. Bella has to deal with that, and of course we all know she doesn't. But, um, you know, we all know this book is just a how many page, 500, 600 page advertisement of how Bella cannot be without Edward, and that's basically what it is. And you know, we knew how codependent she was from the last chapter of Twilight. You didn't need to go on for 25 more about how codependent she is. We know. Okay? We do. But the thing about this is Edward leaving makes no sense. It truly doesn't. It makes zero sense. Maybe it did in Meyer's head. But it sure doesn't here. <laughs> it it really doesn't. There is. I see if I can try to get my thoughts grouped together on this one. I gotta pull up something. I actually wrote a little bit of an essay about this, um, of why this doesn't work. Because uh, there was uh, the the story behind New Moon, which I'll be sporking, of course, at the end. Um basically says why he's supposedly leaving. And here it is. Uh, here's the quote. As I started plotting New Moon, untitled at that point, it became clear that Edward was Edward and he would have to behave only as Edward would. And because of that, Edward was leaving. Okay, now I'll read what I wrote in this one. Okay, so Meyer here is basically claiming there's absolutely no way to get him to stay. It simply would not be in character for him to do that. If it, that actually were Edward's character then that would be a perfectly reasonable statement. I can understand a person being emotional about their characters, too, except not in this case. He only left for a total of six or seven months. She knew he was going to come back, and there is a difference between crying over the loss of a character and throwing a tantrum a la your in self-insert, because you temporarily wrote a character out of your story. Except you didn't, because you seem to be forgetting about imaginary Edward who shows up to endlessly irritate us. <clears throat> Freaking out because your favorite characters go on vacation for less than 300 pages and the 70,000 words, I counted, is, to put it bluntly, stupid. Particularly when you did everything in your power to manipulate him back into the story. And the main point, though, is that's not the correct characterization. It goes against everything we saw in Twilight. The most we ever got of him believing that he shouldn't be with Bella was him saying, you should avoid me, but then incessantly following and stalking her and preventing her from doing what he always told her to do, which was, stay away from me. You say it's in character for him to leave. You say it isn't. He started following her around and climbing into her room and hovering over her one month after she arrived, and he refused to let her go anywhere without dogging her every step, save the LaPush Beach, and that was only because he couldn't follow her there due to the treaty. When did he ever leave? Why on earth would he spontaneously and for no reason change his mind? It couldn't be that his being around her caused her danger, because I didn't see him flouncing off after the James incident, which was much more dangerous for Bella, and we ultimately saw him blame himself for that as well, supposedly. Why didn't he leave then, if it was so in character for him to want to leave? And, you know, it, of course it all also falls apart, uh, I do have this quote from Midnight Sun. I pulled it up because I knew I was going to need it. Um, in Midnight Sun, Edward says this about Bella, about why his love is so deep. I could understand how I might, in unforgivable selfishness, ask my father, Carlyle, for that favor. Ask him to take away her life and her soul so that I could keep her forever. And then shortly after that, he says, I'm tired of trying to stay away from you, Bella. So why did he leave? That does not jive with anything we have seen previously. 
It makes no sense. Why would he leave? He has been stalking her, telling her how much he has to be there to protect her from everything. And then all of a sudden, well, I have to leave to protect her now, knowing full well that, you know, Victoria's still out there, the one who vowed that she would, he knew she would fight James to death. He actually uses that as an excuse later in the book. You know, I would never have left if I'd known about Victoria. You did know about Victoria. You said she'd fight to the death, and supposedly you know about your kind and how they focus on revenge. You know, and I love his assumption. Well, surely she'll go after me. And I have to ask why, because Edward did not kill James, as I emphasized. Uh, that, that, that part drives me crazy. Why is Victoria so fixated on Bella when in reality, you know, I can understand wanting to kill Bella because she was the ultimate cause of James's demise, but wanting to kill Bella to get revenge on Edward when Edward didn't do the killing. <laughs> yeah, that that's annoying. That's just a stupid way to try and make the focus on Bella. Mm. Oh. Uh, but back on the actual track, he stalked her to Port Angeles because two vampires, their friends, who eat people, were going in the opposite direction she was. He had to protect her from them. Yeah. He tells her not to go into the woods at the risk of evil vampires eating her. And then all of a sudden he just leaves her there after he spent all of Twilight telling us how she smells tasty to everybody. What? After he spends all of Twilight telling her how she's a danger magnet, how trouble finds her, and he has to save her from it, and then he just leaves. That makes no sense. Meyer, that does not gel with what you have written at all. You know, I know going on about how that doesn't fit with the character in a with the characterization of Edward when he actually doesn't have any is weird. But he actually, as I pointed out, you know, in my final thoughts of Twilight, there is characterization here. It's just all bad. But there is characterization here. And that's not part of his character. He is obsessive over her. He thinks he is her guardian angel. And I, that quote's in Midnight Sun. He actually does call himself his guardian angel. Snape tore him a new one for that one. And yet he just wanders off because he thinks he's protecting her. Why does he have to leave? He's the one who saved her life from Jasper. Which, you know, I've already gone into those plot holes. God. I hate Jasper, in case you didn't know. I've already gone over why that's stupid, but he's the one who saves her from Jasper, and as a result says he has to abandon her. You know, she'd be dead if you weren't there. And somehow that means you're the danger. What? That makes no sense. No sense. None. But I suppose at this point it's a little, you know, demanding to ask for a tiny modicum of logic in these stories. But yeah, that, that's why the entire driving force of this book just falls apart. Because it makes no sense. He had no reason to leave. In fact, it goes against everything his character has shown us thus far, and I'm not talking about just Twilight, I'm talking about Midnight Sun, which was written after New Moon. It doesn't gel with that either. He never spends his time thinking about how dangerous he is for her. Well, he does, randomly. But there's not most of the time he's spending thinking about how he has to keep her safe, and has to stalk her to do that. And then out of nowhere, he leaves. It doesn't gel. It makes no sense. It doesn't fit. It's... It's stupid. It's... Ugh. <sighs> Approaching a ten minute mark. I was hoping this would be the last one, but it's not. I'll make sure the next one is. I'm not going to go on in this about an hour. Part five, coming up. <laughs>